Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the As Always podcast. This episode of 156, I'm one of your hosts, James, and I'm joined as always by Tyler. As always, how's it going, my friend? It's going pretty well, how you doing? Doing well, happy to be here nice. in this brisk summer Sunday morning. Mm. Um, not that it is for you, but for me it is. Um, and uh, I'm, I look like pure shit, I think. I was looking at myself in the camera and I uh, think I look like shit. And that's just well, me, that's, that's okay. That's okay, but happy to be here. I feel good. Like, I feel mm-hmm. good. Um, I love getting up early. I mean, not that it's 8.30 in the morning. <clears throat> I'm already, I'm always up at this time anyway. So um, this is a normal time for me. Unlike when we normally no. record, which um, it's, you're getting me to stay up late. 10 o'clock's my bedtime, James. And you're making me <laughs> do it after that. Yeah, you're making so. me get up early. I don't want to do it. You, midday is not early, James. It's and early, I'm not having, it. I'm not having you get, convince the no, people that I'm we're, doing anything. We're doing it at 11 a.m. anyway these days, all right? It's not 12. It's 11 oh, a.m. So because of the time. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, we're exactly. Doing it at 11 a.m. Thank you. That's all I needed to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the apology. Like, if you're having breakfast at 11 a.m., it's no longer breakfast. That's my point. Like, if you're eating a meal, like, you're past breakfast time. Yeah, true. Like, you've never had breakfast in your life. <laughs> That's what I'm throwing out there because you've never been up in time for breakfast. No, no, even when I was at school, I'd miss school. You know, I'd, I'd come in at midday and be like, wow, I'm See, early. here's the thing. I believe you would do something like that. Like, you're the kid that would just show up late because oh, I was sleeping. Like, nah, you're not at kid. all. Literally, not at all. I was I was there on time every single day. I was, you know, but that's because of my mum. My mum is uh, very much, you know, likes to be on time for things. So I wasn't. Were it down yeah. to me, I don't know. What would have happened? Yeah, I know. Um, oh, yeah. No, I mean, we can't leave you responsible for anything. No, not at all. We've no. said that before. Um, but that's okay. Um, we're here for the final, as always, podcast for 2021. Um, it's been a hell of a year. I don't feel like sitting here reflecting necessarily too much about the year um, like we normally no, would. No, uh, We normally rough. would do that. I think, for, I think for you and I, it, what we're excited <clears throat> about is this weekend we've got a Four Pillars podcast. For me tonight, like we've mm-hmm. got a Four Pillars podcast. We've got we're recording Unity Co-op. We probably need to remind George um, because oh, no one, one yep. no one can seem to in the Four Pillars remember anything. You guys need calendars for the love That's of true. fuck. That is very true. Like, why don't we have? Like, I have a calendar. I know when we're recording, and every time someone will be like, "Oh yeah," I'm like, "What do you mean? We've got shit on." Let's look, fucking, you if know. I had a calendar, I wouldn't look at the calendar. But you've got a phone. You've got calendar. You make you do it in your phone. And I wouldn't look at it. I would forget to look at it. It has reminders on it. You, It sets reminders. It'll tell you. You don't have to look at it. Nah. No, what do you mean? <laughs> nah. <dude. laughs> no, I, I can't do it. You've put up roadblocks every time I've, I've said anything. And then I've Trust given me, you a solution. I would see, I would see the notification. Problem. I would delete the notification. And I'd forget about it. It's like you setting alarms. Like that, they don't help to wake up. They don't, you, no. I just I wake up and I'm like, oh, I don't feel like this. And then I turn it off and go back to sleep. Uh, only I, I don't do it on purpose. Yeah, yeah, and then I sit here with my fucking dick <clears throat> in my hand like, well, James isn't here for the podcast. Um, cool. Yeah, that is true. That's happened a few times. This year has been really bad for it, to be fair. This year has been a bit mental for it. Oh, I, um, I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you what I think we need. Like, we've sort of like in the second half of this year recovered in the sense of like we've just like we fumbled the ball around a lot and we've just sort of gotten through it survived I would say I wouldn't say mm-hmm. we've come back and like won we've come back and survived <laughs> like yeah, yeah. we've made it to the made it to the belt mm-hmm. um, but I'm keen for a break I know you're keen for a break like not really think about a podcast for a bit and that yeah. tends to bring excitement back and the new year always brings new excitement because one we've got new artwork we usually have some new ideas new concepts I certainly have some new ideas, um, and I think a fresh start next year, it's just going to be good. I think we're just, we're ready for it. We're both ready to yeah, just yeah. be like, okay, let's start fresh and forget everything that happened this year. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Been, it's been a weird year. It's been fucking weird. It's going to be nice to get back on track. It's going to be nice to hopefully in 2022, um, do podcasts and have them go out on the days they're meant to go out. You know, that'd be, that'd be nice. Cause I feel like it's been so all over the place. It's been a bit weird. Yeah. It's thrown me it, off. It has it has been weird. I don't know what's going on when because there was just no Four Pills podcast and yeah, and I don't think anything was said. No one tweeted anything. Um, no, I didn't really didn't. Need, people asked really, me. They were like, "When's the podcast going out?" I was like, "Oh yeah, we forgot to." Here's tell the thing: I, normally I would have done it, but I don't. I have I'm not logged into the that Twitter. I've never tweeted from that account, so I just need to get onto oh, that yeah. and then I That's I'll true. do it. Like because I only yeah. use the as always one really. Yeah. Well, the login uh, details are on our thing. Our yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. 
I know they are. I assumed they were, but I just was like, I hadn't been bothered to go around and doing that. I'm like, oh, that's like a two minute process I'm not doing. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I, think, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, whereas I'm like, oh, if I'm logged in, it's right there. I'll do it. Because when yeah. I think about it, I'm like, I'm not searching through three apps. I'm not doing it. Um, <laughs> what's wrong with me? Lazy prick. Anyway, um, the only reason we survived, James, I would say, is the great people over at patreon.com forward slash oh. as always that make the show happen, great. the producers of the show. They've literally kept us going and being like, I guess this is something we should keep doing because the people yeah. love it. And the people support us. So thank you to Ollie the Superior. Oh, hang on. You do this. You do the producer list. I'm so sorry. Oh, I do do the producer yeah, list. Yeah, you right. do the producer list. I'm, uh, I was about yeah. to jump in. I um, have it up. Because of then, that, I should probably yeah. have had it, you know, open. I probably should have it ready. You, you would know. think so, but that's okay. <clears throat> but ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you listen to here and you want to hear or see more, head over to patreon.com forward slash as always. And for just $1 a month, you get exclusive and early access to James's videos, podcasts, like mm-hmm. the best podcast in the internet, the Clubhouse podcast, Tiles Tales, and a lot of other fun, cool perks and rewards. So go check it out. Go check it out. Go check it out. Thank you to everybody supporting us. $25 or more. You're our producers. We think you're really nice people. We've got Ollie the Superior, Ollie Avery Dobbs, Clive53, Damien, Epic Ulrich, or Gimli's Dwarven member, Ferentino, Flash Paradox, Franco, Jesper Olsen, King Richard III, Ryan Hayper, Tristan Weaver, Viridian, and Ballsack47. Thank you all so much for your continued support. Uh, we've got an exciting show here today. Um, no, no guest. And that's why I didn't tell you the guest was last episode, just yeah. in case this happened. We, we predicted um, this. Because you just never know. You just never know. People, it's just, at the time of year, dude, December's busy. Everyone's got fucking it's Christmas right. family shit on. It's just too much going on. It's hard to book people for December. And that's okay. Mm. But there's a yeah. lot we, you and I have to talk about. There's a lot you and I have to get through. Obviously, yeah. we've got the 2021, as always, awards. Oh, um, yeah. So that's really exciting, as voted by you, the people. So I uh, can't wait. Uh, to to go through all of that with you. Uh, also, we had the Game Awards, the official Game Awards for 2021, yeah. and that had a few things. I didn't watch a fucking second of it, but I did watch a few of the trailers that came out from it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have no idea. You can fill me in on who won everything, but uh-huh. the other thing is a big game came out this week, James, mm-hmm. um, by the name of Halo Infinite. Mm-hmm. And I think we should talk about that. That's what I think we should talk about first. I think we um, should, yeah. Um, firstly, I've played one hour of the campaign. It was last night. Okay. I had this wave come over me. I hadn't bought it. I was like, I don't even know if I'm going to play this. I'm going to be honest. I, I did have this wave come over me of like, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know when I'll have the time. I don't know when I'll be bothered. And yesterday I watched, I went to YouTube. I'm like, let's watch the opening cut scene. And the music, the Master Chief. I'm like, okay, we're doing this. We, we're downloading this. So I downloaded mm-hmm. it. Um... And then last night, I, before I went to bed, I was like, okay, I've got to play a bit. So I played, like, I haven't quite finished the second mission. Mm-hmm. So super early. Super yeah. early. Mm-hmm. Um, but have you finished it? I assume you finished I have, the campaign. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, without spoiling anything, obviously, because uh, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm smiling right now. I've got a nervous smile mm-hmm. going on. What, what did you think? How, what are your feelings? Because I saw you tweet a few hours in and you're really enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Do you feel the same way after finishing the campaign? Yeah, I think it was fucking it was fucking great. It's a game that uh to me just got better as it went. It sort of showed all of its strengths. I think you can tell when you're playing it that shit had to be cut. I think you can tell, but I don't think it's to the game's detriment necessarily. I like that it was it didn't overstay its welcome. Um, I did dabble in some side stuff here and there. Like, I did have a little explore. There's so much more for me to do. Like, I've not really touched much. I kind of mainlined the story just because I was very much enjoying it. I was, like, really into yeah. it. Story's um, strong. So... Story's, I'll give it that. The story's strong from the get-go. You're like, what's yeah, happening? Yeah. I There's wanna, a lot I of really wanna... nice things. And it's yeah. it's sort of everything unveils and reveals itself, and it leaves itself in a really nice place uh, just for finishing off the self-contained story that it's telling, but also setting things up too, um, which is really cool. Um, and it was just really solid like i finished it i think i finished it in like eight hours um it was pretty to be fair that's i I thought you were gonna say something like two or three hours like scary so eight hours to me so that's a long halo campaign that's a very long halo campaign yeah it was it was if you just normally six six hours i'd say because because like i i did yeah around about and i did do a little bit of side stuff but not nearly like as much as there is to do like i did bits here and there sort of as i was going to the next mission if there was like a little camp i was like well, I'll take over that place because I'm probably going to need it to, like, 
go and kit myself out with some weapons before I start the next mission or something. So I'll go and do it. And they take, like, yeah. five minutes. Like, not even. Like, the, the yeah. little camps... Because there's a few little camps dotted around that you can, like, do and take over. And they're, like, your forward operating bases. Those ones don't take long at all. It's like a couple enemies. You just kill them. You press a button. It's done. It's sorted. Um, and it was it was nice. I, the side stuff was, like... Somehow the open world just sort of worked. Because it's, it's not open world in, like, a in like an open world sense it's more like a batman arkham almost where like you've got these these set districts and these set parts of the map and you have stuff to do in them and you have linear missions that you do you know over the course of this stuff and like the, the missions don't feel like open world missions like a gta it's more like a batman where you like you go into a building and you have like you know a 10 20 minute 30 minute mission or whatever depends how depends on how long you know but you go through and like then you come back out you're in the you know, open space again you can choose to go off and do what you want or you can just continue with the main path and I, it works really well because it's a very small contained area but the missions feel very unique and they feel like their own little thing and because the missions i like, imagine take you off to a different location <coughs> like the, at least the main um, missions right sometimes sometimes it's like a matter of going into a cave and like you end up going underground and so you go through like you end up in a forerunner structure sometimes like you're actively going into like a forerunner tower or structure sometimes you just sort of go through this like a separate area sometimes it'll it, they, you will get in like the pelican it'll take you off to just like this set area where it's like the e3 yeah. demo for example is like a set mission where like it's an open space but it's like a contained linear open space sort of thing within the greater open world that like you have to complete stuff in to be able to leave and go back to the actual open space um okay and so there's like bits and bobs is and the map large How, like is it a large map it's not that big it's yeah. big enough but it's not like an assassin's creed or like a well that's you know, a GTA good because or those are yeah uh, it's so big and too big yeah it's good Way it's, too big. It's, there's enough dude, stuff dude valhalla's map was ridiculous i'm like this is stupid. this is actually Just insane stupid. yeah it was well, halo absurd. is absurd yeah halo is like you can you can run around it pretty comfortably like just running around and grapple hooking like you don't really always have to be in a warthog or whatever and there's enough stuff to see and do um that you know it makes it worthwhile and there's like bigger open world stuff to do in um in in the in the world that you can like you know tackle if you want and each one feels quite unique in a way like um there there was like there's the ones where you take out a fuel base or whatever and like there's little data pads around that give you little lore on the banished or the unsc and where they're at like characters from halo 4 and 5 um and stuff like that and then there's like another one where there was like the banished were like excavating this site and it was this old like forerunner like ring thing that had like a message imbued with it or whatever and they were trying to like salvage that so you have to like stop them and like you know destroy the base and whatever and it's just nice little bits of context and the dialogue between like chief and the weapon as well back and forth during the side stuff just makes it all feel a bit more meaningful um and all that it just sort of worked like i did not expect it to work the way that it did and it just sort of worked and i think yeah there's not much i can really criticize for it uh, other than like the one where the one place it does sort of like fall down and lose points i guess when you compare it to something like a halo 2 or a halo 3 um yeah. even even Hello. combat evolved is yeah. the the just the the variety in where you go and wh whenever i think about like variety in halo halo 2 is the one that stands out because yes halo 1 and halo 3 both have a lot of distinct environments but halo 2 is like there are so many you have like the urban city environments you got the deserts you got the the snowy areas you got the jungles you got the the forests and the the spaceships like you go onto the the, yeah. the different like forerunner like the the you're on the forerunner bases and you go onto the covenant ships and stuff there's a lot going on and obviously infinite doesn't yeah. have that um but it does do a good job of distinct like distinguishing the open space and the forest from like the forerunner structures and stuff so like when you do go into a forerunner building all the forerunner buildings feel similar yet different and it always feels like okay what's going to be around this corner and like what kind of secret yeah. things are we going to find here and I, I really like that aspect of it um you know it's not perfect in that regard like obviously more variety would be better and i'm sure you know down the line with more campaigns mm -hmm. as they're going to be doing we'll get to see that but that's like the only way i would really fault it everything else was really strong like characters really good <laughs> chief was brilliant story was solid and the world of what actually worked so like yeah it's, i honestly just had a really really good time with it that's fantastic well i mean i'm really happy to hear that um for the most part then again whenever you like anything i grain of salt until two months go by and then we'll see um where, you, where your opinion <laughs> lies where your opinion lies um i'm pretty confident on this one i think i think i'm i think i'm right I yeah look the I, i'm just going to vibe vibe alone that's how we operate here on the mm -hmm. as always podcast yeah, true, um yeah. 
the first hour of Halo Infinite gives strong, mm-hmm. positive, good Halo vibes. Like, and and this is minus well, it's just for the opening sort of portion of the of like first mission type thing. Like, the the game gives you very much like those Halo touch points you want to see with the just Master Chief lines, for example, like small Master Chief lines. You're like that's the most chief thing I've heard in a long time. Mm-hmm. Like just things he says, like th- they didn't get right in barely in four and not at all in five. <laughs> yeah. You know, those, those moments that you're like chiefs, you know, a hero is a big deal. And uh, you love that his legend continues to grow in amongst the enemies of the humans. Like you have the mm-hmm. banished and they, you know, know who he is. And um, what's cool about um, the banished here is, well, the, the lead is not Atriox. Though. Like you know, they're saying the demo because Atriox didn't Atriox die? Is that or is that a spoiler? <clears throat> um, uh, maybe that's a spoiler. I mean, it's uh, complicated. Because that's Halo Wars two. That's Halo Wars in 2, Halo right? Wars two. So it well no well in Halo Wars. I forget two, Halo Wars two. I did play it, but I forget. Atriox is like the founder of the, the yeah banished. of the of the banished in Halo Wars two. In Halo War in Halo uh, Infinite, we have Eshram who is leading them. Um, yeah. It's a, I guess it's kind of a minor spoiler, like the Atriox. It, I mean, they, like they sort of reveal it in the first like hour of the game, like in the first well, like, thirty yeah. minutes, five minutes of the game, whatever. It's after the the intro cutscene. You get Eshram talking to the chief, like through like hologram, or whatever. And they just sort of casually mention, yeah, Atriox died on the UNSC Infinite um, Infinity um, when he right. destroyed it. <clears throat> when they destroyed it, and everyone like they basically lost. Oh, this that's war where he died. Whatever, and Chief oh, okay. was left. Yeah, floating in space. So he, like, I throws see. Chief out and then dies, essentially, is what um, you're yeah. told. Okay. Well, um, you're told. So I assume he ha- isn't dead now that you've said that. Um, um, I'm just bleep, just bleep all that out, Josh. Um, I, <clears throat> yeah, maybe. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, that's, yeah. Okay, because I was a bit confused. I was like, did he die in Halo Wars 2? It confused really me, how... too. Chat was like, because tra- chat was like, because I was like, oh, I wonder how much Aatrox is going to be in this game. And chat's like, he died and i'm like wait what the fuck do you mean he died when did he die um but it's just because they weirdly mention it like just off it like just to the side what what i wanted the point i wanted to make was i like that the covenant fear the master chief a lot of people fear the master chief what i like is that Mm -hmm. um eshram and atriox and these banished they don't fear him and Mm. you know they disdain they have disdain for him yeah, they want to fight him because, like, the banished they and like, it's sort of like themselves on taking on the strongest shit. foe. That they're mm. like, we want to take the chief head on because he's like mm. one of the strongest humans. And yeah. I like that. That's cool. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. That's what I yeah I really enjoy early on, and um, the weapon comes into the game pretty early, mm. and it's a great addition. But even just like hearing, you know, in in chief's head, he's hearing Cortana bits and there's mm-hmm. there's a bit in mission two that date and all i'll say is data memories mm-hmm. like the and that's you'll only know if you played it one of honestly the coolest halo moments since you know bungie mm-hmm. i was just having that moment yeah. of like because I, I chief is one of my favorite video game characters of all time and i've really lost the love for him over the years because of you know halo 5 but there was moments and you see certain little data memories and it's just like, fuck, they haven't really told, I know this story because I'm a big Halo fan, but they haven't properly told these stories of Chief and his past and where Mm. he's come from before in an actual Chief Halo game. So you're sitting there in his sixth title, you know, I mean, there's Halo 6 for for the Chief Mm. and you're now getting this like really deep into his psyche and I'm like, I fucking love this. I love this. You know, when you, because it make it reminds you of his humanity, which you don't mm. think about. You're like, Chief's a fucking superhero. He can do anything. Yeah. But then you're sitting there, you're like, wait, like, he, he's gone through, um, you know, he, he was once just a normal person, to mm. some degree, right? Um, and even just having that thought, you're like, fuck. It adds the vulnerability to it. And you're facing these fucking banished that want to kill you. And you're like, oh shit, here we go. I don't know. They, mm. I just think they did a really good job early on in this game to make me like reconnect with the chief because they've lost that and they've got me back. And mm. also humanize him enough that he's vulnerable. 
to the threat yeah. we're about to face. And I'm like, that's very hard to do in a franchise in a game that's this old and gone for this long with a character like the Chief, and they've done it. So I actually think they've nailed the opening. Yeah. They've really nailed yeah. the opening. I feel like they've achieved what they tried to achieve in 4, and 4 doesn't do it hugely... Like, it's not that bad. Dude, you could almost start 4... Like, you could get rid of 4 mm. and 5 because of what's... 3 ends yeah. and the ship's floating. If you just replace it with whatever's happening here... Yeah, um, just like, fine. you know, you could do... If you mix that around in your head, you're all right, you know? Yeah, 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 um, head cannon. Uh, this but is Halo it's, 4. Um, <laughs> it's like when Halo 4... Like, Halo 4 did a lot of trying to humanize Chief and show, like, the man behind the suit and everything. Oh, it's just job. handled in a very odd way. But Infinite immediately gets... Like, it just does it well. Like, it shows the Chief is this... Like, he's, like, he's not a normal man, but there is a normal man in there somewhere. And I think that's what Infinite does a really good job of portraying very early on. Um, I think that's really solid and I think they only progressively do more with that as the game goes on and the relationships he has with the you know two of the main characters the weapon and um, the pilot um, it's just like just sort of helps Chief's like own sort of development and growth and sort of you know character writing as well it's just really solid just a really really solid game that opens up the doors to do a lot more in the campaigns to come whatever they do moving forward with Infinite but it's you know solid really solid yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm really actually excited to keep playing and mm-hmm. see where it goes. And, and you mentioned, you know, without spoilers or anything, that it's a lot of setup. Um, do you believe? Do you yeah. believe that they're setting up because the game industry sucks ass in 2021 slash in the future? That it's gonna be Halo Infinite DLC, and they, they want it to be like a sort of live service <laughs> game where they add campaign missions to it and. Yeah, it's going mean, to continue, or do you think it's just setting up the next Halo game with the Master Chief? They've said, I mean, they said before the game is going to be like this is the Halo's platform for the next ten years. So, yeah, I yeah. imagine we're going to get like you know in a year, two years, whenever you know we'll get like another campaign. They'll release another campaign, and then in a couple of years from that, we'll get another campaign, um, and they'll just sort of keep adding these stories like whether they're all chief related maybe they'll tell other stories of, of other stuff that's happening in between those maybe the chief ones are those main big stories maybe you could do some other things in there as well i yeah. think it'd be a great opportunity to do more don't just do like the bare minimum of like oh we'll release like one campaign every five years like you know you've got this game you've got this platform let's use it if you're going to be updating the multiplayer as well try and update the story you know have some of those additional stories in there show us what happened to a lot of other characters like where's the arbiter at you could do a story for the arbiter if you wanted to yeah. Um, but that next major chief story i mean there's so much they set up in this game while doing it's it's quite good actually the way they do a lot of setup while also just focusing on this story as well so it's like a lot of both are sort of like intertwined in a really cool way that sort of leads into you know the ending and the post credit scene and a legendary ending and whatever um yeah <clears throat> to to lead us yeah into whatever's to come next which i'm very interested in i think it's really cool yeah yeah, absolutely. Exciting, exciting times. Um, mm-hmm. Game Awards, there was a few trailers of things that came out, yeah. um, including Halo. The Halo TV series that I think everyone just sort of fucking forgot about that existed. Oh, yeah, Paramount. Um, what are your thoughts, Ed? You obviously saw that trailer. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know what to think. There's like talk of like, is it canon, is it not canon? A lot of people seem to be of the mind that this isn't really canon. I, th- I think they've left it very open because they're not sure. Um, I think maybe if the show does really well and it's really great and it ties into lore, maybe they'll go, you know what, yeah, it is canon when we go on to season two. May- if it flops, they can be like, oh, it's not canon. Because there's, you know, they've said, oh, we're doing our own thing, we're respecting the lore, but we're, do- we're telling our own story. And I don't know whether that means their own story within canon or not, but who knows. Yeah. Um, it looks fine. No, nothing really too big there it's just kind of like a few establishing shots and you see chief and like the armor looks pretty cool um, yeah but yeah i mean i'm pretty yeah I it's a, it's so ballsy care. to try to do a a show for halo and you're tackling it with the master chief's the main character yeah yeah it's like, that's the most mm-hmm. difficult thing to do like if you're gonna do a halo show just do a side story do like a halo reach where you'd follow other characters do like whatever they do in yeah. the novels you know follow yeah. follow different characters in the halo universe and tell a compelling story when you're trying to go with chief and like it's been he's not you know it's not even played by steve down so like how are you gonna get that oh, like, really voice yeah. like oh god i don't know it's a bit worrying 
Because you never expect in the show, like, that guy to be in the suit, but you expect him to voice him still. That's what I was yeah, thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I expected them to do, but no. So, I don't know. I'm a bit concerned. Yeah, that's probably going to turn out to be not very good, but, you know. Yeah. So do most things. Yeah, that's true. Most things don't turn out to be very good. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, they did The Witcher really well. I mean, it's totally different, different company. But, you know what I mean? Like, it is possible to do sh- I mean, if you're going to do video game stories, it needs to be shows, you, you, you'd think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Just for give, give it the time. Uh, so, yeah, yeah I, I feel the same. I feel the same. Bit of nothing. Bit of like, okay. I mean, the production looks good. Um, but same concerns lie that I yeah, always yeah. had. Uh, what what were the other game trailers that stands out for you that that you're like buzzing about? I think biggest one that like I'm really looking forward to, and it's not a major game, is Plague Tale Requiem because Plague Tale Innocence was really really good. It's one of the best games I played last year. It didn't come out last year, but I played it last year. Um, yeah. And it just kind of surprised me how much I love the characters and, like, how engaging the gameplay was. And, like, it wasn't too long. It was, like, an easy, you know, 10-hour game. Like, just really solid, really good story. And it looked gorgeous as well. And Requiem looks like it's just, like, building on all of that. So uh, that's that's a big one, I think, for me. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and then what else did they show? There was plenty of stuff they showed. Like, there was a new trailer for Spoken, which looked really good. Um, still looking forward to that. Um, yeah. They showed Suicide Squad gameplay, which is from Rocksteady. It looks, um, <laughs> uh, you know, like a game. It, I, like a game? What do you mean? I didn't see. See, I didn't look at the trailers of things that I have seen things about before, like Hellblade. I was like, I'm not going to play it, so I'm not going to watch oh, it. And Hellblade it wasn't looks new. insane. It looked insane. One of the greatest looking things I've ever seen. Like, I don't even know how they've done that. It looks incredible. Um, and that's a big win for Xbox because that's an Xbox game. So, yeah. The, uh, um, yeah, but it's there. The, and that was same with Plague Tales because I haven't played the first one. I've got it downloaded. Mm-hmm. I just haven't played it. Um, that's very good. And, but I like Alan Wake 2, which is just bizarre because, oh, yeah. I, it's hard to call it Alan Wake 2. It's been like 12 years since the first one. And it feels like they're just... It feels like a reboot. How can you call it Alan Wake 2, really? Um, did you ever play oh, the first Alan Wake? No, I didn't. But I'm going to because the remaster just came out. So yeah, I have to play that at some point. Because it's about a it's about a it's like a novel writer. Yeah, and he, yeah. And he writes this story. But then he, you're sort of living the story and playing through the story that he's written. And it's happening to him. Yeah. It's very. It's a very. It was a very interesting game. Like it's not the greatest game ever, but it was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure, like in this day and age, they really invested some time and money into it. Into it. Um, a second one, I'm sure, probably a lot better, in some ways. Yeah. And I think they've got the same actor back and everything, so that's pretty cool. Mm. Uh, Star Wars Eclipse. Oh yeah, from uh, Quantic Dream, the guys who made uh, Heavy Rain and uh, Detroit Become Human. So that's interesting. <laughs> That is very interesting. So, yeah. I, I mean, I love Detroit Become Human. I haven't seen Heavy Rain, but I love, love, love Detroit Become Human. Mm, uh, are yeah. we expecting this to be that same exact game style, but with Star Wars? Maybe. I Probably, because it's like all they've made. They've only ever made games like that. So, yeah. I expect it to be, which is kind of exciting to see that format in a Star Wars experience and how that's going to play out but then you never know they could be going for like something completely different with this one um but it's exciting um i was just worried watching the trailer because like oh it's a star wars game set during the republic uh it, it just worried it was going to be the fucking ubisoft one and then i wasn't going to play it so wait ubisoft um, are making a star wars game they are yeah uh, oh, some that's sort of terrible. open world Star Wars oh, God, game. what a nightmare you know, that's going to be. Light RPG elements, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, oh, in-game I'm, store, most probably. Yeah, yeah, dude, lots of in-game store, lots of outfits. I yeah. can't wait to fight, like, some fucking Valkyrie in Star Wars. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, they'll like, just pour over assets from Assassin's Creed. Dude, they put it don't in. even think they won't. They will. Absolutely, they will. <laughs> There's going to be an eagle mechanic, but it's a droid, and it flies Bunch around. Of- fucking cunts and you fight a sith but he's like five times bigger than you for no real reason oh yeah oh, dude you're, you're you're fighting a behemoth sith lord 100 yeah, percent. because massive. i can't respect the uh villains for being powerful unless they're 10 times my size yeah when they're that big i, I just know 
Oh, that's how you know. You know what I mean? That's how you know it's a boss because you wouldn't it, know otherwise. Well, it's like when you're watching any sort of TV show movie and there's a big like battle scene and everyone's wearing helmets except the main characters because you got to know who they are. You know, yeah, you got to know exactly. who's who. It's exactly like that. You've got to know he's evil and, and he's powerful because he's ten times your, your size. He's ten times your uh, height and he's got a he's got a health bar. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. Can't can't wait for that Star Wars game to not fucking play that. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, we got we got Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate coming out on PC, PC. which is cool. I'm going to buy it and play it again. Why? Um, why? Why? You've done it. You need to buy it. I do. <laughs> you don't, you I don't need to buy it and play it. Why do you need yeah, to buy it and play it, do it It's going to look, it's gonna look prettier, you know? And it's it's going to look prettier. It's going to do it for me. It's worth it. Um... What else did we get? Oh, Horizon. We got a new trailer for Horizon Forbidden West. We did. Which was it wasn't. Cool. I mean, it wasn't much. It, no, it, it was wasn't a lot. More, it was cool it was though. Just, yeah, it was cool. It's just more of the um, more of what we've seen. I, I I think I've now seen enough of Horizon Forbidden West until the game comes mm-hmm. out. I'm keen to just wait. Yeah, I'm keen yeah. to wait. Yeah, same. It's gonna be soon, so it's you know it's alright. Because they're not showing any story to be fair to them, which I appreciate. Yeah, um, true. It, it's not. just I feel like they're showing different angles of the same sort of moment of the game like very early mm-hmm. on but they do in this trailer obviously show a few different like outfits for Aloy a few different landscapes and it looks fucking awesome and and how the different gameplay works in the different environments from underwater using the little like shield parachute that she has that's really cool um, and, and the combat definitely f- looks like and flows way better I don't know there was that one part about zero dawn that sometimes the speed and pace of the combat was a bit off like mm. i found that time slowed down at times i don't think it should have slowed down and it didn't slow down at times it should have slowed down type thing like it's just a lot going on sometimes uh and you feel like you're just sort of even though you're trying to be tactical it feels like a bit of a button mash to just not get hit by explosions everywhere and mm-hmm. it's hard to even tell what the enemy is doing they're just flinging shit at you yeah, um, I don't know about you, but I just feel like this looks like it's a bit better paced. It yeah, flows sure. a bit better. It looks like they've done a lot more to make it just just to build on Horizon Zero Dawn, and I like the addition of like the different stuff you can do with like melee attacks, which was sorely missed in Zero Dawn. I think like your your spear was kind of fucking useless. Yeah, um, until you got the so... shield armor, it's like why would you use the spear? Yeah, yeah, and you get, like, yeah, when you get the little uh, electric thing. But it's nice to see there's, like, a lot more involved there. And also fighting human enemies, too, with, like, the way you can pick off pieces of their armor and stuff. Um, they kind of work similar to machines where they have, like, components, but it's just, like, armor instead. Um, I just think that's cool. Yeah, everything which looks like Horizon Zero Dawn, but made, you know, ten times better. So, yeah, that's yep. going to be very hype. Very hype. Um, yeah. And yeah, I don't know what else there was. I mean, there was the so- Open World Sonic game was finally revealed and shown, uh, which is going to be a disaster. Um, I thought, is that the Sonic 2 know. trailer or was that the movie? Oh no, Sonic 2, yeah, they revealed, they did the movie trailer and then they did the Sonic Frontiers trailer, which yeah. is their Breath of the Wild clone, light RPG Sonic game. Um, yeah, I'm not a Sonic person, I could give two fucks about Sonic. Yeah, no, I'm just, you know, kind of a bit... Uh, I'll probably play it because I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, but, no, I know. you are, that's, and that's true. Yeah, you are. I'm yeah, glad you know that. Yeah, I am. Oh, Would... uh, also, there was there was uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, who cares? Well. Who gives a shit? Uh, I thought you'd say that. Yeah, but I had to bring it up. Yeah, I had to do cares? my do my duty. Yeah, as a, re- as a reporter here on this. As a reporter, show. yeah, that's me. It's what I do. Well, any of those, yeah, I don't, I don't care much for the Suicide Squad or one whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Like, yeah, no. I love my superheroes, but I don't care much for superhero games all that much. Like, I mm. like the Spider-Man PS4 ones, but Marvel doing the Wolverine one, doubt I'll play that. Fuck that off. Yeah, but you don't play anything, so... I don't play is anything. Is it really That's the superhero point. game, or is it just yeah. the game in yeah, general? Yeah, it's, it's just that it's a game. It's yeah. just that it's a game. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm playing Halo Infinite, and that's, to be honest, more than I thought. Wow. Um, I'm surprised I've come into this show having played an hour of it. That's what I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah. I know you sounded surprised when I'm like, oh, I've played an hour wide. You're like, oh. <laughs> You've done it. You've actually played a bit of it. Yeah, I have. I came oh. in with some knowledge. With some knowledge. Um, and I will finish it. I'm actually pretty You have pretty to, because we're, we're going to do a spoiler cast. 
Yeah, but it's not for a while, so that's fine. Yeah, true, I got, I got, but, I got you know, like, you know, yeah, I got time. gets away from you. Elden Ring had Elden another Ring, trailer. Yeah. Uh, I haven't played a Demon Souls any of that. Now I have, I I have Demon Souls on my PS5. Mm-hmm. I have it because David Jerome bought it, played it, and it looked fun. It looked cool. It's very fun. Should I play that first, or if I jumped into? Because again, do I play anything? I don't. Is Elden Ring one I could jump into and play? Do you think you could jump into any of them and play? But I think you'd probably like Demon Souls more. And that's purely because Elden Ring is going to be bigger and longer, and yeah. you don't like that. So I don't. It's I true. Think I Demon Souls is linear, level based. Elden Ring is semi open world, uh, Metroidvania, sort of more like a God of War in terms of its open world, yeah, sort of structure. So like, yeah, you're spending some time exploring the world, fighting bosses in the world, getting your like, uh, I guess it's like your soul counter up so you can get some more skills and stuff. The Elden Ring trailer, I'm, I'm, I've, I've got it playing now. What they've done really well is made <laughs> me know that this enemy is really powerful because he's 20 times the size exactly. of the main character. So they get they it. Know. What, what I, I, so I will play this game because of that alone because they understand game design. They understand. It's simple the, game design 101. You make your enemy bigger, I know he's enemy. That's how it works. You know he's enemy, you know he's powerful enemy. You know what I mean? Exactly. He's not just a one-hit enemy, he's he's challenge enemy. He's Exactly. Yeah, the smaller the enemy, the easier the enemy. Yes, is normally how it works. It's always how it works. If you know, if you know anything game, about game yeah. design, and I do, so. uh, we we both do, and 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 that's the thing. And and to me, when someone tries to tell a compelling story with an enemy, and 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 makes you believe, like let's say he's my size, that he could win somehow or outsmart me, what that is, what that tells me is they don't get game design no, when they, they try to do it. that. No, they don't get it. They don't get game design. They don't get how games work. They don't get the audience. Not at all. Um, and there's only one way to um, tell a story, and it's um, Big Enemy. Yeah, Big Enemy. Make sure it's big an enemy. RPG, too. You make sure. Because otherwise, no one's going to play a game. Oh, 100%. Because people Absolutely. only play The Witcher, and that's the only game anyone's ever played. That's the, It's like a common, like well-known fact. The only game that's ever sold a single copy is The Witcher. That's true. So I've you have that. to make sure your game is a complete copy of it, otherwise people don't b- buy your game. So that's true. Yeah, that's a great that's point. As it, I'm watching the Hellblade Two trailer. Is this mm-hmm. gameplay? Mm-hmm. It is. Even though it looks like I'm watching a fucking movie, is that what's happening yeah, right now? It's insane. It's fucking insane. It looks incredible. I mean, the very first this time they showed m- it off, it looked incredible. But like, this what footage the fuck? is mental. Just absolutely mental. This is this been like Unreal Five? It might be, because Unreal Five is wild. I don't know if you've seen any footage from that new uh, the demo they put out, the Matrix Awakens demo. No, I haven't. Play on PS Five. That's mental. Like it lets no. you roam around the city space that's just all built in Unreal Five, and it's insane. It looks insane. I could not believe what I was seeing as I was playing it. Um, I'll I'll have to look it up right now, but I'm just sort of skimming through the Hellblade too, like. Even just the way they've got the aspect ratio sort of like cinematic like that. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm interested to see if that's what they'll do with the full game. Yeah, well, it's similar to Order 1886. They had like that aspect ratio of like a film. And that was a really good looking game. came out in 2016 um, or 15, oh, I don't yeah. remember. And that was like, you know, it was a fun cinematic. I really like it. I think it's really cool. But I'm a sucker this... for like really immersive shit. So that was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, Hellblade looks wild, and it looks like they've gone in a bit of a different direction from Hellblade One, which, again, like Hellblade One looks great still to this day. Yeah. Um, but Hellblade One, I think, was a bit more gamey in how it did like level design and stuff. It was a bit more like a video game, whereas it looks like Hellblade Two is going for a bit more of a cinematic, sort of maybe Naughty Dog type approach. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. Oh my god! This fucking giant thing crawling for us is giant baby. Well, they, they get it. Big well, that's enemy. How you know it's, it's a... the yeah. That's how you know it's the enemy. Yeah, it's that's big. how you would do. This is fucking mental. <laughs> 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 this is mental. Why are all these enemies so big? Why we just notice it now every game? <laughs> it's how you know. Oh god. Oh god. Well, I mean, Halo Infinite, Atriox, and all them—they're just fucking giant brutes. They're, they're big. Giant. That's yeah. how you know they're the standout enemies. They're big. Exactly. They're the biggest ones. Name a good game where the enemy or the main bad guy isn't huge. 
Uncharted 4. Shit game. <laughs> shit game, yeah. Shit, yeah, shit game, shit game. Well, I mean, they let's don't... be real. Rafe is a shit villain, so... And that's shit game. If, and, and if we know anything about game design which we do we've established that is that if you your enemies are big you don't get game design and Naughty Dog from my understanding don't get game design that's what I think Yeah. well if you kept all of the writing exactly the same in Uncharted 4 but you made Ray five times bigger it'd be, oh, dude. be a better game maybe, the, maybe one of the greatest games of all time probably but, then it would but un- be yeah. but unfortunately they don't get game design no that's the unfortunate thing Naughty Dog don't get it no they don't get it and that's okay not everyone can get it not everyone can get game design Mm-hmm. But but you know, some of the, some great <laughs> some great companies do get game design. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you know, and thank God for them. Thank, thank God, God for what would Ubisoft. We do? <laughs> <laughs> thank God for Ubisoft <laughs> and their their innovations in the game development scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They get it. They get um, it. these guys who make Hellblade, they get it. They get it too. Yeah. Elden Ring, they get it. Halo gets it. 343 gets it. You know? Yeah, wow. They get it. That's what you want to see. Um, true. What about this new Sonic Sonic game? Is there a big enemy? Do they get game design? I, I don't think they've shown any enemies in it. Yeah, okay. So Maybe they don't. You know, maybe they TBD. I don't know. Yeah, we're not sure. We'll find out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Sniper Elite 5. What the fuck? How's that still a thing? Is that thing? a real thing? Yeah. I see it everywhere. What is this? I don't even know what this game is. It looks ter- It looks like a 2007 Elite. shooter. I remember when the every, first every one time. came out. Yeah. Um, how about this Forspoken trailer? Oh, that was good. It looks like a great game. It really does definitely, look like a really fun game. They definitely had a big enemy in that. Is... is it's Square Enix, so it'll be it on everything. Square Enix. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to have a ge- like a magic game. Like that's yeah, a be- that's your weapon. Yeah, I love that. Nah, oh, man, this oh this trailer looks sick, dude. I'm at, yeah, I'm actually really excited for Force Bucket. Every time I've looked at it, like it never stands out in name, but whenever I do decide to actually sit down and watch trailers for it, I'm like, oh man, this looks fantastic. Yeah, it looks really nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's big enemies here. They big get enemies. it. Big enemies. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There's this giant like animal thing shooting lasers. Yeah, at you. yeah, yeah. They get it. Well, we know. We it. know Square Enix get it. Look at Kingdom Hearts. They always have oh, big enemies. Oh, look at. Oh my goodness. The Rock Titan, an all-time classic boss. Well, I mean, look at any of your main your main villains. The end of Kingdom Hearts one, the greatest of all the Kingdom Hearts. Um, at the end, you know, you're fighting this guy in Ansem, and you're always bigger than you, but but once you beat him, what happens? He becomes an, an, a mega huge Heartless. Yeah, a big fleshy boat or something. Yeah, and you have to beat, yeah. like, five different versions. That's how you know. They get it. Exactly. They do they get, get it. it. They get it. That's they get why KH3 sucks, because Xehanort didn't turn into a big thing. He didn't turn into a big thing, that's true. Yeah. That's exactly. true. Exactly. Um, like, Yazora? Shit. Terrible boss. Oh, uh, you just, mean a guy? Just a small just a guy. guy. Yeah, just a small guy. How am I supposed to know? I didn't. I couldn't beat the boss for weeks because I just thought I didn't realize he was even an enemy because he was. I was just height. sitting there thinking it was a cutscene. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I, I just thought. <laughs> I, just I didn't even thought. know I was in gameplay. I didn't know what was yeah. going on. I couldn't tell. Yeah. He yeah. wasn't big. No, I was waiting for him to go big and then I would start playing. Exactly. You know. Damn. God of War gets it. God of War gets it. There's you know yeah. there's big enemies in God of War. Dragons yeah. and shit. They get it. Um, Red Dead doesn't, obviously. We know that. Rockstar, no, not, no, like not known for good games. Rockstar? No. Um, and obviously Horizon gets it. Like, you know. Horizon, mm-hmm. Horizon Forbidden West fighting giant, giant robots. So, they get it. Anyway, that's the Game Awards. Those that's are all the, the games. That's the Game Awards, wow. Those are all the games. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I and I hope gaming right now. Yeah, well, I hope everyone learned something about game design today. I hope so. Thank you for coming to our TED talk. The TED talk. Um, we do have our awards, James. So we do have we do. to talk about twenty twenty one, the year it's been. Um, yes, it has been a year. Yeah. Um. And cover what the people wanted, what the people believed were the best 
games, movies, TV shows, all that sort of stuff for the year and what we're looking forward to next year. So I think without further ado, James, we need to just get right into it. Nice. I'm excited to find out. I never look at the results. I wait for you to tell me the results and then yep. I react to them. So Yeah. Okay. Some good results. Here, here, here we go. Let's start with game of the year. Let's start okay. big. Game of the and year. And then we'll and then we'll end with most anticipated game of the of next year. Sounds right. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. The official welcome to the official as always awards 2021. Welcome everybody. The official community awards of we decide what's the biggest game movie tv show of the year and what we're looking forward to next year it's decided by you the people it's voted on by you the people it is Um, sadly we don't have an orchestra but you know we're trying we don't we don't um but this is the biggest i know you were like oh it's the game awards that's the biggest awards no this is the biggest awards of the year um what you're watching right now what you're listening to right now in your ears so game of the year the nominees are hitman 3 Forza Horizon 5, Resident Evil Village, Guardians of the Galaxy, Kana, Bridge of Spirits, and Life is Strange, True Colors. I played zero of those games, so I have no opinion. Um, wow, that's a, been a, been a pretty dead year, I'm not going to lie. And also, all those games sound like shit. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, been, it's been quite a dead year, but you know, 2022, that's the year when the big guns come out. So I'm looking and forward to it. You know, it's been a tough year when it's very close on almost all six fronts in terms of the Not been results. a big standout. Not been a standout. There was not one clear standout, but there is our winner. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the official... Oh, this is so dumb. I, hate, I actually hate that this one. The official, okay. as always, <laughs> awards 2021 Game of the Year is Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I mean, I guess, dude. I mean, I don't think I would have celebrated for any of those winning, to be honest. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess know. it. I guess it deserved it. I guess. Like, I, I feel like Halo Infinite would have won if we threw it in, just because. Yeah, it's Halo, you know, Halo I mean? Infinite. Halo Infinite is probably my game of the year. It's my game of the year. It's the only it. one I've pl- I played an hour of it. Yeah, it's one hour more of any other game I have played this year. So to me, Halo Infinite's game of the year. Is the when only when you say it's your game of the year, you mean it's the one you've played. It's your. It's the one I played. Tyler's game of the year. It's the one he's allowed himself <laughs> it's to play. Tyler's <laughs> game. It's Tyler's <laughs> way you've said this is. It's Tyler's game of the year that he's actually played. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, he decided to pick it up and play. It. Yeah, and it's yeah. true. It's true. And Halo Infinite is yeah. that. It is that. Next yeah, year there'll be two if God of War comes out. Because I'll play Horizon and I'll play God of War. Those will be the two yeah. I play. Those will be the two nice. I play. I feel like there's a nice. lot more games next year than I'll play. There's a lot more games. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. What comes um, second? Uh, Forza Horizon 5. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Good game. Yeah. yeah. Great game. It was, all, it was all pretty close. Pretty well-rounded. Um, oh. Oh. Okay, this is exciting. And this is a lot of good spread, but this was great this year. There's some decent ones in here. Um, mm. 2021 Show of the Year. Show the nominees the year. are You, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Squid Game, Sex Education, WandaVision, and Loki. Ooh. Don't tell me Loki won. I'll cry. <laughs> no, no. Oh, actually, I forgot to... What's your game of the year? What was your game of the year? Will you say Halo Infinite is your game Halo, of the year? Halo, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay, my game cool, of the year. Sorry, yeah. I just realised. I was like, okay. The winner. 2021 show of the year. We've got a great community here, ladies and gentlemen. Is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes. Fantastic. Absolutely the show of the year. Very good. Absolutely. Great. great Thank news. God. Thank God. My uh, God. I thought, I thought our community was retarded. Um, <laughs> I was worried for a second. Was Loki um, second, though? No, Squid Game was second. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I think Loki was third. So it's. Oh, know. okay. I mean, that's okay. That's uh, fine. It was, to be fair, it was not only one and two were close. Only Squid Game and Falcon were close. Okay. Falcon won. Falcon definitely won. Cl- clear winner. Clear winner. Um, Falcon nice. Soldier, which is fantastic. <laughs> I think the biggest lopsided. Oh, no, absolutely not. Um, no, that's absolutely not. There's one really lopsided winner today um oh, and it's absurdly obnoxiously one-sided um but that's uh <laughs> that's later on um next is movie <laughs> movie of the year movie, of, movie the year. of the year um again movies only really started coming out at the end of the year i feel um mm-hmm. so it's a bit tough it'll be way bigger next year but there's still some good movies on here 
Movie of the Year, we have Dune, Free Guy, Shang-Chi, A Quiet Place 2, Luca, and The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf. <laughs> what a random selection of movies. Look, to me... Look, Shang-Chi is a fantastic movie. They were well, great movie. I really loved it. I've seen... <clears throat> Four of those movies. I haven't seen Luca. I haven't seen The Witcher. Because um, cartoon. Um, well, they're both cartoons. So I haven't seen either of them. Um, so I saw the four real movies that are on here. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, to me, there's only one winner. And it's the one that won. It's the one that dominated the clear winner by the people. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. the movie of the year 2021 is Dune. So scared you're going to say three guy just then. Congratulations, well, the dude. dude! I saw I saw it last week. It's fucking awesome. What a great movie! It's terrific, yeah. I absolutely loved. It. I can't wait for um, the sequel. The world yeah. building in that movie, dude. Mm-hmm. It's unreal. It's phenomenal. Unreal. Like to make you understand all the different like politics, different planets, the different races, species, everything going, and you got a really good grasp on the world you're watching. And you, I knew nothing about this world going into. It. I knew nothing. So to be able to learn and feel like by the end I understood the motivations and backgrounds of everyone and who could do what and powers and magic and all that sort of weird shit they throw in there. I'm mm. like, yeah, I get it. I'm not a fucking expert in it, but I get it enough that I can thoroughly enjoy and predict and be excited about the future of the story. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Amazing job. For sure. Amazing job. Brilliant. Um, what is it? Would you agree? Is doing your movie of the year as well? I would agree. I would yeah. agree. You know, it was tough to choose between Dune and Free Guy, but I think <laughs> Dune just, just... Free Guy's a good movie, know? and I don't care what anyone says. Free Guy's a good okay. fucking movie. Um, right. uh, and I'm glad that show and movie of the year were both you and I shared, but also the people shared. People mm-hmm. shared. Um, so that's fantastic. <clears throat> Next up is Meme of the Year. Meme of the Year. Me- meme of the Year. Meme of the Year. Um... Okay, the nominees are Tyler Impressions, James and Tyler Aren't Real, mm-hmm. Don't Shoot the Messenger, Tyler's Hot Fudge Sundays, and George is an Incel. Honestly, some great memes in there. Some absolutely memes. fantastic memes. The James and Tyler Aren't Real, that's been a lot of fun. That's been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Some great funny laughs. Don't Shoot the Messenger, one of the great Clubhouse podcasts all time. The Hot Fudge Sundays, they, they were a bit of a timeless classic throughout the Four Pillars podcast. And George being an incel, like, are we... Come on. What a funny moment. But the most dominant win of all of today's awards is this is this category. Um, with 76.6% of the votes. Amazing. It's Tyler, Tyler Impressions. And as of it should course. be. As of it should course. be. So congratulations. Hey, man. Thank you so much for choosing me for meme of the year. I fucking appreciate you all so damn much. I'll keep I'll keep going into 2022, and let's hope we are continue on this grind, folks. Thank you very much. <laughs> doesn't sound anything like me. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, it does. sound like anything like me at all. Sounds just like you. That's what you say. But but, but um. Oh Jesus Christ! There's a tie next. Oh God, we've got a tie. The next Ooh. award. I just look down. I'm like, holy shit. We have a tie. And I'm, I'm not happy about the tie either. I'm not really not happy about it. I didn't <laughs> vote, so I can break the tie. I didn't vote. I can vote right now and break this tie. Oh, perfect. Let's do um, well, So can I. I'll vote the other way. It'll still be a tie. Yeah, no, you won't vote the other way. Trust me. You'll want, you want the... the <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, well, we're going to have to have a tie. It's just what it is. People voted. This what happened. Um, yeah, but yeah, vote. Tyler Impressions, I feel like, had to win as a meme because one, it's not a new meme. It's actually an ongoing meme. It's been a meme for years. But the fact the meme evolves, like the meme now is not the same meme it was 12 months ago. It wasn't That wasn't the same as it was 12 months before that. Yeah. Before it's, we used to say, hey man, meme. for sure, relax. And now you, you guys do your speeches. <laughs> like even on Twitter, there was one f- great moment of Josh and Gaz doing like impressions of me of like going yeah, outside yeah. with your friends and all that like it's just fantastic stuff this year it's amazing it's it's one of those memes you you might even call it a meme live service um <laughs> they, yeah 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 we keep, yeah, keep adding to it, it. keep patching progression it. Yeah. systems broken and it's got a microtransaction store but it's a great meme that we love nonetheless 
Yeah. Now, sometimes does it annoy me sometimes because I'm just trying to have a conversation and anything I say makes people laugh and I'm like, guys, I'm being serious. And it was like, ah, Tyler's funny. I'm like, shut the fuck Tyler up. Tyler just said something. Yeah, oh that, yeah. That sometimes it annoys me because I'm like trying to have a conversation and people will just laugh and I'm like, I'm not being funny. Can we have a serious conversation? It's a time and a place, but it's one of the great memes all time in the community and um, rightfully is meme of the year 2021. Um, okay, the next award is the guest of the year on the podcast. Um, the nominees are mm-hmm. Colin Moriarty, Maddie, okay, Mr. Maddie plays, While She and Found a Scarab, Jack and Joan, and Conversations. Yeah, four guests. We've got a tie, James. We've got a tie. Who is it <laughs> between? A, we've got a tie. Uh, now, and the reason I would have tie broken this, I would have tie broken this, but uh, there, we were, and it would have been good because the guest of today's show was supposed to be the winner. Was supposed to be the yeah. winner. Yeah, he was going to win. I was expecting Matty to win, hundred percent. And win. and and Matty has won, so congratulations to Matty. Amazing for winning guest well of the year, guest of the year, Matty. Hey, game, Mr. Matty plays. So congratulations. But he's got to share the trophy this year. <laughs> and I'm so oh angry about this. God. I know. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, the co-recipient <clears throat> of 2021 Guest of the Year <laughs> for the As It Was Awards. Uh, and for the first time ever winning this award, congratulations to Eddie and Shep's conversations. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> oh... <laughs> I hate that. I hate that. Amazing. That's so annoying because I checked the other day and Maddie was winning clear as day. The conversations have come in and absolutely snatched it up. They've rigged it. They've rigged the ball. <sighs> We've got to tell Eddie and Chips they won an award for oh, being the best God. at something. They won't They won't shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, and thank God it's a tie though in that way. Like yeah, imagine if they yeah. outright won. I would have been like... Yeah. Very worried. But no, I mean, they've never won anything in their lives ever, if you talk to them. Like, not at school, not anything. They've never won anything. So, no. this is a, it will be a big deal for them, and they'll probably never shut the fuck up about it, too. So, that's annoying. That's frustrating. Mm-hmm. But congratulations to Maddie. Congratulations to Eddie and Sheps. You're the guests of the year. The people couldn't pick between you. Fantastic stuff. Maddie, you're a great guest, and we loved having you. Um, so thank you, thank you, Maddie. Only Maddie. Um, yeah, I feel bad for him. He's uh, he's just tied with with conversations. I know, I know it's tough. Poor Harry. guy. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. Um, next award mm-hmm. is the 2021 Podcast of the Year. This is uh, this Podcast. is a very coveted award. I, I think this is up there with one of the most important awards. Podcast of the Year. Um, now it's always tough because we throw clubhouses in there, and only a portion of the audience is seen clubhouse yeah true uh, because you're idiots if you haven't um but the nominees are we've done two clubhouses two as always awards and two four pillars podcasts um or two as always podcasts not as always awards. um <clears throat> so we have the clubhouse podcast episode 126 james and tyler aren't real and lots of simple girls clubhouse podcast 101 simple wars revenge of the nonces and mr brightside the story amazing they played mr brightside at my work christmas party the other night and I was just laughing so much. <laughs> I was like, I can't even listen to that song anymore without laughing. Missed the bright um, side, the story. Great podcast, great story. Uh, the As Always podcast, episode 147, with Mr. Matty Plays. Um, that was a fantastic podcast this year, loved it. Um, the As Always podcast, episode 148, God of War versus Red Dead Redemption 2, the Civil War segment. That was, mm-hmm. and it was also the seven year anniversary of The Four Pillars. <coughs> Yeah. The community. That was a seven year anniversary show. And one of the great segments of all time people loved that Civil War segment. Uh, mm-hmm. The Four Pillars podcast, episode five, writing chapter three of the AC fan fiction, teaching Tyler Twitch and more. And that was a great, like, maybe the hardest I've ever laughed. Yeah. Maybe the hardest funny. I've ever laughed. <coughs> that was such a good podcast. Yeah, that was incredible. And finally, Four Pillars podcast, episode 17, Tyler is a meme. George can't look, at, look after himself, and James hates his dog. <sighs> So that's my pick. That's it's a great podcast. For those who don't know, episode 17 of the podcast, 
Um, we listened to George's um, old podcast where he said something questionable things. Um, questionable things. What else happened that podcast? Um, there was a there, bunch feel, of things. It was like a bunch I, of I, things. Because I feel like I rewatched it the other day and it was so awesome. From start to finish. Like, such an awesome episode. Um, it was the... George recommended was all the Americans doing paintball and, oh, and laser skirmish yeah, and shit. yeah, and he talked about the, the people being, like, the fucking Americans being, like, you know... Really you angry. got a fucking problem, buddy? You got a problem, buddy? <laughs> but there was Amazing. something right at the start of the podcast that George had me just dying on. There was that Absolutely. you breastfeeding bit at the beginning... Oh yeah! Oh yeah! That was what I was laughing because George and we were both, goes. We were like George, Tyler breast. Hang me in on breastfeeding. Then, but George, George legit thought Eddie was asking him to look after. Oh Tyler, yeah! And I was yeah. howling, laughing, dude. I could not. It was a, one of the funniest things I ever heard. It was like yeah, that, you're that was a good. fucking idiot. Like I was like George, come on, bro. Yeah. Um, I got we the wrong. Bit, there was a bit where we like looked back at one of those cartoons you used to watch as a kid. Oh, oh, Shin Chan! Yeah, 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 yeah. Shin Chan. That was great. And also, I got the wrong McDonald's order. You got the wrong got, McDonald's order, yeah. I got like an <laughs> apple, apple pie and shit. Dude, that was a great episode. That Shane Dawson great... was the segment where we talked about Shane Dawson being fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, oh, killed his God. cat or whatever. What a um, good episode. 17 that was, the best episode. That was a good episode. That was a good episode. Um, I agree. It's my pick for podcast of the year. It's your pick for podcast of the year. Do you know what else it is? It's also the people's pick for podcast of the year. The yeah. winner for podcast of the year is episode 17 of the Four Pills podcast. It's that one. I feel a little bad Ethan wasn't there, but um, yeah. it was what it was. It was the best episode of the year. It was a fantastic podcast. A fantastic podcast. Was I mm-hmm. baked out of my mind for that show? You, you know who's to know? Who's to say? You would be. You would be the one to say. I would be the one to say. Can't recall. Was that ordering McDonald's? I feel like that would tell you. I feel like that alone will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that alone. Um, and that's okay. We had a good time. We had a great time. We did. We did have a good time. I look like shit in it. My hair was not done. It was all flowy and... Just adds yeah. to it, you know? Makes it better. Yeah. 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 I'm wearing the same shirt. I'm wearing my fishy shirt. Oh, man. So, you know... So Ethan was there. I was wearing my fishy shirt. He was there for the podcast. Yeah, he it's was fine. There. He was there. He's he was a part Mean of it. Spirit. Um, amazing, amazing. Um, wow, we still got a few awards. Good, 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 good. Uh, good. I was like, oh, we've only been going for an hour. I'm like, are we re- are we already at the end? But we're not. We've got a f- quite a few awards to go. <clears throat> Next up is video of the year. Video of the year. Video of the year. We have the nominees for video of the year. When video game character creation goes too far, a dynamite short by myself, dynamite. Mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed Revelations, ten years later retrospective from Lasers. Oh, that's mine. The Tragic World of Demon Souls review analysis by Long Eared Fox. Absolute banger. The magical experience of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, ten years later, fishy. Um All great videos. All really fantastic videos. I really enjoyed making the skit. It was a bit of fun, mm-hmm. something different for the people. Um, don't expect that to win. In fact, it, it doesn't win. And we know that. And that's okay. Um, <laughs> Such a shame. What, yeah, I know, I know. What do, people don't understand quality. People don't understand no, quality. No, they don't that's get okay. it. Well, you made, you made sure that the enemy of that skit was really, really big. So you get, like, filmmaking, you know? Well, well, that's the thing. That Do you see the angle I chose for the enemy being, um, exactly. obviously, the, the gay nonce that is David Jerome? Um, I angled yeah. it so, like, the camera's facing up towards him to make him look a bit bigger. Yeah, see? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The people don't get that. They don't no, get they don't that get it. But, no. no, they don't get it. They don't get cinema. They never, they never get... fucking worked a day in their life on a film ne- set. They wouldn't understand. Never. Never. Never a day in their lives. Uh, the winner is, by a significant margin, this is a big one, big big margin, which is, I feel like every year when we do the video of the year, uh, significant, by a significant margin, whatever video James nominated, ladies and gentlemen, Assassin's Creed Revelations, 10 years later, <laughs> retrospective. Honestly, when I fucking when I fucking put this up, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should put up not the revelations video because then at least you know, you know, people will stand a fucking chance because they see Assassin's Creed and they just they fucking they go mental. They go well. The people the people don't get it. The people are idiots. The people don't get it. We know that they don't get it. You know, if you're a true connoisseur, you would have voted for George's video. But that's but don't get me wrong. Your video is amazing. It's not that. I'm specifically just talking about they'll vote for anything that says Assassin's Creed on it. It's true. It's very true. I would like to see what the result would have been had I put up. 
you know, a video that's infinitely nowhere near as good as George's, just like something fucking random. No, no. I mean, you could have still put any of your great videos up, just not an Assassin's Creed one. That would have been interesting. I still think you would have won because you're going to win every year that award. I truly believe that. I don't, I don't think it matters what video anyone makes. Um, you will win this category every year. <laughs> every year without It's a fake fail. vote. It's a fake vote. It's not even like what's the best video. It's like the who do you like the most. <laughs> I don't know why people will vote for me, but you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Look, but to be fair, I mean, I think you're the best in the game. I've said that. I say it, I'll say it again. Thank you, man. So, so I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, I think, for voting. I think it's well-deserved. It. I think it's well-deserved. George's video is also fantastic. I think they're both phenomenal so is Ethan's um, mm-hmm. yours was great too very I different too. I'm, I like mine a lot too but it's very different like you're throwing mine in there you've got three different like gaming retrospective analysis That's true three hour yeah. videos and then you got me where I made in an evening a homoerotic <laughs> skit about creating a video game character with my best friend like that was yeah. very different vibes true. very different vibes true. I loved it I think it's a fantastic video I'm glad I made it but uh, again, it's not. It's hard to feel like it's very hard to throw in um, against you when you guys make such amazing um, video game analysis stuff. But mm-hmm. there it is. It involved video games. It mentions them. I did. That's true. Um, but that's all I got. <clears throat> um, all right. Blunder of the year is the next category. Blunder of the year. Blunder More of the these. year. We have a lot of nominations for this. Um, the nominees are GTA Trilogy Remastered. Halo Infinite's progression system, Battlefield 2042, Abandoned and Blue Box Studios, Ooh. Lord of the Rings show Leaving New Zealand, Scarlett Johansson sues Marvel, Black Widow release, and Zack Schneider's Justice League. <laughs> so we got really mad about that. Did you see that? When um, we did that on the podcast, we got like a comment. Someone was like, I can't believe they actually did that when this or that. I was just so dumb. It's like... <laughs> You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a shit movie, and if you like it, you're a fucking idiot with the greatest respect. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it really yeah. shows your true character, you know? If you yeah. like Zack Snyder's Justice League, you're probably just a horrible human being. You know? <laughs> I would say so. I would say yeah, so. Yeah, I'd go as would, far as to say that. Yeah, I would say so. Dude, there's another tie in the next category, too. <laughs> fucking oh hell. Oh, my God. There's another tie. But that's actually a decent one. It's a decent tie. I'm happy with that. Okay. Um, mm. Okay. So... To be fair, like, you can say what you want about Blunder of the Year. You can say you, you're mad that Zack Snyder's Justice League's nominated, but it's second. It got second. It's voted second <laughs> by a amazing. large portion as Blunder of the Year. The people agree it's a huge blunder. In fact, it's the second biggest blunder of 2021 and officially amazing. in the Azores Awards. But the biggest blunder of 2021 is the GTA Trilogy Remastered. Yeah, that's funny. Which I think... I don't think it's fair. I think, to me personally, Zack Snyder's Justice League is the biggest blunder of the year. Cause, I mean, yeah, um, of course it is. Yeah. It's a terrible piece of shit um, that, pe- <laughs> that, pe- that people convince themselves is good. That people are like, oh my God, finally everyone unanimously thinks that Justice League's good. And it's like, no, the three people you've had conversations with thought it was good. And you're all, and you know what you'll have in common? You're all idiots before this? You're all still idiots. So that's what's happened. That's sad. Tyler, you just... You, why are you so arrogant, Tyler? You just don't get it. You just don't understand. Why can't you just leave me alone? Yeah. For God's sake. <laughs> I'm so arrogant. Uh, that's so funny to me. It's my show that you're watching. I can tell whatever the fuck I want. No. You, um, you, fuck, you called me up. You called me up when I was at work just to tell me that the movie I like is bad. And, and it, made, it really upset me. Yeah. You also called me names. Yeah. God damn it, man. Yeah. Well, don't be an idiot. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm doing you a favor. That's true. <clears throat> if you listen to my advice, you won't go wrong. Ask, ask the people of Clubhouse. They'll tell you. You're right. They'll tell you. <clears throat> uh, I'm excited for this next category. Uh, okay. It's a new category we've brought in, which is Clip of the Year, now that we've got the Four Pillars Clips channel. Ooh, yeah. um, so the Clip of the Year nominees are Were You All Fucking Her? A title of my clip. Me it's playing AC2. Good classic one. clip. River Raids breaks lasers. <laughs> lasers plays AC Valhalla. Good clip. Classic clip. Leonardo da Vinci's greatest invention. Tyler and David play oh, AC2. Yeah. I think that's a great clip too. That's, that's my funny. that's my actual personal favorite clip. That's my personal favorite clip. That's good. George is an incel from the Four Pillars podcast. Oh, that that's a great, so funny. great clip. Great moment. I cannot believe I said this. Horsey and Fox clip. Oh yeah, that's funny. That's a classic. Now this this is a tie. This is a tie. Um. There's two winners. Okay. It was actually quite a well-spread voting, but there was a tie for the winner. Our second tie 
of this year's awards. We've never had ties before. We've got fucking two in one year. The winners are sharing it. James, you and I are splitting this trophy. River Raids, Ooh. Breaks Lasers, and nice. Where You All Fucking Are are the two nice. clips that won Clip of the Year. So we're going to split that award between ourselves. We get to share it. That's why I like that it's um, nice. a tie in this case because it's you and I. We're here with the host yeah. and we get to share the award. We each got a top clip. We all got a top clip. That's we good. Got a top clip. Now, if we're really going to break it down, who's was viewed more? It was mine. So <laughs> technically, mine's the better clip. That's all. How many, how many got more likes? Well, let's have a look. Let's have a look. You think it's the more viewed one, but you never know. You never know. You know. You know. You're right. You never know. Things. Mine got two thousand seven hundred likes. That's a lot of likes. <laughs> it's a lot of likes. Where's it's a mine? lot of likes. Where is it? Uh, oh, River Raids breaks lasers. There it is. Six hundred twenty-four yeah. likes. Yeah. There wasn't yeah, yeah. 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 Wasn't how, even. Close. Well, how many? How many views? What was your views? Uh, eight point five k. Okay, mine was fifty-seven thousand. <laughs> so. That's crazy. I'm going to tweet this out right now. You know what? I might just upload it as an advent calendar video. It's funny. The River Raids breaks lasers. Yeah, just me getting really mad at the River Raids. Yeah. But the but Ethan's clip, the most painful mission in Assassin's Creed 2, insane. was 28 seconds. It got 580,000 views. That's why? so insane. Why? And it's like, why? <laughs> it's so a great, many It's views. a great clickbait title, to be fair. It really is. Yeah. And his most pathetic boss final time clip as well. He's got over 100,000 views. That's the two most viewed clips on the Clips channel. Third being my clip that won best clip of the year. Um, just saying. Yeah. I'm just so glad that you don't have the top clips. In fact, <laughs> Ethan does and so I do. We, he and I so have more I. views than you. Fuck you, man. I'm glad. You win everything. We yeah. want shit. We want shit. Yeah. And we got I'm happy it. for you. I'm happy for yeah. you. You know, for once. <laughs> <laughs> you patronizing fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fair though, fair. <clears throat> all right, that's it for the main awards. All these next awards are for next year, like 2022, most anticipated. Okay. So those are the main awards. Let's just go through it one more time. The Game of the Year, Guardians of the Galaxy, Show of the Year, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Movie of the Year, Dune, Meme of the Year, Tyler Impressions, Guest of the Year is Maddie and Combo Stations, Eddie and Sheps, Podcast of the Year, the Four Pillars Podcast episode 17, Video of the Year, Assassin's Creed Revelations 10 Years Later, Retrospective by James, Blunder of the Year, Zack Schneider's Justice League, sorry, I mean the GTA Trilogy Remastered, Clip of the Year, Split Between We Were Fucking Her, Tiny Light Plays AC2, and River Raids Breaks Lasers, Lasers Plays Valhalla. Mm-hmm. Some good awards, some, some ones that didn't really deserve it, um, but, you know, that's not for me to say that Guardians of the Galaxy is Game of the Year, but whatever. Um... Most anticipated game of 2022. Mm-hmm. The nominees are Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok, Elden Ring, Forspoken, Starfield, and the Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. Mm-hmm. James, what's your most anticipated game of 2022? Mine is Horizon Forbidden West. Really? Okay. That's my number two. My number one is God of War Ragnarok. Mm-hmm. Obviously the follow-up to the greatest game ever made. Um, But, for, I mean, it's close. Like it's t- And I think Horizon, I get it because that's soon. That's February. And God of War could get delayed. Yeah. I'm not convinced it comes out next year. Mm. I think possible. it does. Like, if gonna, I, I called from the very beginning Horizon wasn't coming out this year. I told you that. I said from the beginning, I promise you, it's not coming out in 2021. God of War... We knew it wasn't coming out in 2021. We all knew that. I do think it comes out in 2022, but I, I'm like 80% sure it does. I'm like, there's, there's enough chance yeah. it's early early 23. But I do think it will come out next year. That's yeah. my vibe. That's the vibe. We got I think vibe. so, but it's possible. It's possible it get delayed. You never know. Why Why not God of War for you? Why is it Horizon for West for you? Is it because um, it's coming out sooner? I just think Horizon for me, the idea, I don't know. It's when I think about playing both, I think about them both and I'm like, the idea of playing God of War is like, yeah, it's going to be really cool when I do it. But the idea of playing a new Horizon, it just, mm. it's so it's just like a weird thing to me. I don't know. There's something about it that's like really exciting because it's like, it's Horizon. Like playing a new Horizon just seems so strange. I don't know. Um, maybe it's because it's been longer. Uh, not by that much though. Um, so I don't know. But it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's taken my, yeah, I don't know. 
I'm looking forward most to Horizon. Something about it. Yeah, my, mine's... I get it, because Horizon was a very unique world and experience that we've only got mm. one sort of piece into, and and obviously this God of War's been around a long time, but then God of War, the, that latest entry, was um, <clears throat> a unique take on it all, so it is different in itself as well, but I, I get what you mean. You want to learn more about the Horizon world. Yeah. Whereas I, I feel the like setting, yeah, like I just yeah. that whole like I just imagine like the first time I went to Meridian in Horizon was just such a crazy like experience, like seeing that city and like you got the elevators and the people and everything. It's really cool. Um, so I just interested to see like what they do with the world moving out from that. And I think God of War might be ruined partially by like Valhalla. I might be like oh, fucking Norse mythology. Oh uh, yeah, I like it when I play it, but I find it hard to get excited for. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um. Okay, the winner is most anticipated game 2022, James. Mm-hmm. With over 50% of the votes. God of War Ragnarok. Yeah, of course. Number two, number two was, was Horizon. Number two was Horizon. Mm-hmm. Lego Star Wars was number three. So there's Interesting. that. Interesting. Elden, Elden Ring didn't get the money votes then. Um, no, it didn't. No, it didn't. Interesting. It was tied with Starfield in votes. Yeah, well, that just that's our audience, you know. They're into different shit. Oh, idiots? You mean our audience are idiots? We know that. That's been well established today. I've called our audience idiots at least 17 times in this podcast. <laughs> and you know what? I stand by it. I stand by it. I stand by yeah, it. Yeah, you're all dumb. Get I'm not, I don't think I'm... I don't think I'm not an idiot. I definitely think I'm an idiot also. I'm not just calling you idiots, not me. Um, why else would you listen to me? Idiots know... Idiots get idiots, James. And that's yeah, how I can... That's, that's how I do That's true. All right. Here. <clears throat> okay most anticipated movie 2022 the nominees are Thor Love and Thunder The Batman Mission Impossible 7 Sonic 2 Top Gun Maverick Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse now, I'd just like to point one thing out that I love more than anything. And you know what? Our community, maybe they're the smartest people I've ever met now that I say this. Really? Sonic what? 2 got zero votes. So that- <laughs> <laughs> it got one vote from me, all right? No, it didn't. It I'm got zero votes. It. it got zero votes. It's not a real and vote. And that's it's why it shouldn't have votes, even right? been nominated. If no. the o- this is the only category a nomination got zero votes. And hey, that look. tells me that it shouldn't have been nominated because you're a fucking idiot, James. I get hey, look, our audience. Look, look, when look. I throw in nominations, you're like, no, we shouldn't throw it in. At least they get votes, dude. At least they get fucking votes. How many votes did Top Gun get? He got one. He got one. <laughs> and that's one that's more amazing. than Sonic 2. It. It's one more than Sonic 2. Look, the people that are looking forward to Spider-Man and Thor, they're also looking forward to Sonic, I'm sure of it. They just look, no, them, look forward to the no, other ones more. No, all right? Not. It's not that they didn't so get any votes. It's Top Gun got... Maverick got votes. Mission Impossible 7 got a few votes as well. That actually got a number of votes. So fuck Imagine you, man. Imagine Top Gun Maverick being your most anticipated movie. Dude, I was watching the trailer with my dad last night and we were buzzing about it. We can't wait. We're going to gold class to see it. We're going to like the luxury yeah, cinemas but, to go see the it. The Batman though. Look, can I be honest with you? If you're no. like, what, you can only see one movie. Tomorrow you can see one of these movies. Tomorrow, Like you're going to see all of them. But tomorrow you can go to the cinemas and see... And it's only between the Batman and it's between Top Gun. I'm picking Top Gun. I'm picking Top Gun. Yeah, but that's different. It's because you're gonna have a good time with your dad, you know. That's different. Uh, it's I not mean, the it's... movie necessarily. Now, here's you know? here's the thing. What my most anticipated movie <clears throat> of, the, of next year is mine personally is Thor: Love and Thunder. That's the one I'm mm-hmm. most excited about. Taika Waititi's back directing. I love Ragnarok. I love That'd Thor the one. character. Uh, the Guardians are gonna be in it. I'm very excited for Thor. Mm-hmm. I'm very excited for Thor. That's my most anticipated, personally. Into the Spider Verse Two, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse Two. That's exciting. That they put out a, tr- a clip for that. Yeah, that'll be fun. And it's only part. Well, it's not Into the Spider Verse. It's th- what's it called? Um, across the Spider Verse. Across the Spider Verse Part One. Like it's mm. also not even. Yeah, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse Part One. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, but the winner is the Batman. The Batman one. Yeah. Most anticipated movie in 2022. I assume that's your most anticipated movie, James? That is my most anticipated movie, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. 
So, the Batman, not, not a surprise, well, very excited. I'm excited about all these movies other than Sonic 2, which no one's excited about because you've got zero yes. votes. Yes. Um, I'm excited votes. for it. Let's no, go. You're Eat yourself with knuckles. You're a dumb fuck. Fuck yeah. Um, you got no votes. You get those no chaos one, no one cares. Um, in fact, I shouldn't have even mentioned it as a nomination. Look, okay. I get it. It's just the, it's the indie pick. It's the underground pick. You guys wouldn't know. Under- Sonic. Right? Sonic. Yeah. You guys wouldn't know. It's oh, indie. God. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. The final award today for the As Always Podcast Awards <coughs> is the most anticipated show of 2022. Mm-hmm. This is, to me, the best category. I Actually, the TV and shows are the best at the moment. So, I, I mean, I thought it was the best category up front. I think it's the best category by a landslide here and most anticipated. And you're not even talking about those surprise shows that are, that are going to come out and do really well, like the U Season 4s. The, could be there some squid games you know what i mean those random new ones that like a cult classic squid coming. games the squid Couple games the squid games of the world you know what i'm saying you know what i mean some squid games now the nominees for show of the year there's some big fucking shows next year the lord of the rings the amazon series mm-hmm. game of thrones house of the dragon obi-wan kenobi stranger things 4 Oh, which man, yes. I mean say no more Cobra Kai season 4 which comes out in a matter of weeks and I can't fucking wait I can't fucking wait it comes out on New Year's Day I think I can't sure. wait uh, and The Last of Us TV series they're finished mm-hmm. filming that'll be coming out I think end of next year Um, James what's your most anticipated show of next year my most anticipated show it's tough Right, it's between Lord it's of the Rings and Obi Wan. It's got to be Stranger oh, Things. Oh, Stranger Things Four, yeah. But you, you completely forgot about you know the greatest show of all time returning. I can't wait to see those twenty-two-year-olds play kids again. That's going to be so much I fun. I can't wait to do a Cinema Room podcast on this. To bring back one-off Cinema Room to do Stranger <laughs> Things Four. What a meme <laughs> that's going to be. I can't fucking wait. I don't know if it's going to be as funny because it was so funny the first time because we didn't go into it with the intention of being funny. No, here's the, no, no, no. What we're going to do is when we go into it, we, I intend to do nothing more than we need to be serious. Okay. We need to be serious. We just have to be serious and treat it like a cinema room, like an old cinema room where we break it down, analyze it and then see the funny will come. The funny will come. I hope it we can't does. force. It we can't force the funny. We can't force the funny, James. If there's what if the funny we... doesn't come? What if we just do a really serious cinema room on Stranger Things four? Then that's in and of itself a bit of a thing. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. True. When we look back, and like... people will, people will watch that podcast through waiting for the laughs and it just never yeah, comes. It never comes. It'll never come. Um, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, so it's between Lord of the Rings and Obi Wan. Yeah, between those two, I'm leaning more towards Obi Wan, mainly because. It's Obi Wan. It's Ewan McGregor. You got Hayden Christensen there. There's a, so much nostalgia behind it too. Yeah. Um, but then I'm like, in Lord of the Rings, I think there's a little bit more concern for like, I just hope it's good. Like, I really hope it's good because if you do it right, it's gonna be an incredible show. But you have so much room to fuck it up and make do it wrong. So um, between those two, probably Obi Wan. I think I go for most anticipated show. Yeah, I um. I think I'm with you. Like, look, Lord of the Rings, most important piece of fiction and fantasy world to me that's ever existed. Um, I have a goddamn, we all know, Lord of the Rings, Anduril, even Star Tattoo on my arm here. I love the Lord of the Rings. Am I concerned? A little. I'm very, But I'm also very excited to, to see Middle Earth in a different way in the First Age, Second Age, see, um, the you know, um, Valinor, see you know middle earth in this different period of time with with the valor around with the new the numenorians around like there's a lot there so law wise i'm buzzing i can't wait it's got to be lord of the rings right but we haven't mm-hmm. seen it yet we don't have specifics so we're just going off what i know about the books which so i don't know so that's why i've got to go with obi-wan because i know what i'm gonna get i nominate you and mcgregor tatooine darth vader hayden christensen nostalgia like we're getting the star wars that i grew up on but in a modern and hopefully better way and it's what i want it's pure nostalgia for me and you and our generation our era star wars fans and i and i'm just buzzing about it so i can't wait to see 
my two favorite Star Wars characters, Obi Wan and Darth Vader, back again with the two actors I grew up playing them. It's just I can't wait. Um, mm-hmm. And though Lord of the Rings is my second, your second, it's also the people's second. The people's first is Obi Wan Kenobi. It's the official most anticipated show nice. of twenty twenty two. And it's also coming out pretty soon, like in a few months. Like it's like April, May. Is that when it's coming out? I have no idea. Mm. Maybe. For some reason, I thought it was early next year, but maybe I'm wrong. I do not know, but I wouldn't yeah. know. Yeah, I'm not sure. But Obi Wan Kenobi wins, which is just amazing, fantastic. Oh, it just says 2022. It says just sometime in 2022. We don't have even a like a little, you know, prediction. What, what's it called? A, you know, a fucking. I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about. We, it's coming out in 2022. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know around when it's coming out. Yeah, yeah, that's <clears> a good point. So yeah, good though. Amazing. Have you seen this new? Totally off topic, but I was just on Twitter. Have you seen these screenshots of this new fucking Valhalla DLC? How fucking stupid! Oh, it looks? I have. I have. Oh, yeah. dude, so funny. I don't even know what's going on. Yeah, no, like, I don't either. Um, he's riding an elephant. Is he? Is is Avil riding an maybe? elephant? Maybe. That's so funny. He might be riding. Man, elephant. this game looks so shit. What a like shit Avel. game. That's amazing. Oh, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm pretty Anywho. sure it's like set in all nine realms or something. They're doing like, they're going to all nine of them. The one up in God of War. So it's going to be better than God of War, actually, because they're doing more things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Can we also have an intervention for George and how he's way too into chicks um, that are animated? What? Oh. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's... Just like <laughs> frothing on the new Cortana model, I'm like bro, you need to fucking. I believe dish. in the weapon supremacy. Yeah, he needs to get his life together, dude. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of with him. I think I'm on his side here. You, I be. too believe in the weapon supremacy. Yeah. Um. Oh, dude, the, have you heard this shit from fucking Black Panther Two set? The oh yeah 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 yeah. Imagine Chadwick Boseman's legacy in this series he dies you know in real life the actor dies he's a he's a legend he's a game changer trailblazer absolutely you know was a part of a big cultural moment in film for you know the black community and then you've got the opportunity for a female black lead to take up that mantle that they've given and this girl doesn't give a fuck she only cares about herself she's like you i'm not getting this vaccine that has been tried and tested throughout the entire planet that more than 50% of the world has now gotten and we're all fucking fine. It's we're insane. all fine. You know what I mean? She's crazy. Like, what the, what the fuck? What are they doing with this film? I actually don't know what they're doing with this film. I think they're getting close to a point where they might just honestly recast um, uh, Yeah, I think they should. Almost. But I feel, I, so, I feel so bad for their, their film process has been fucked because of it. Yeah, it's been a disaster. This whole thing. You can't you can't recast the Charla. It won't mm. happen. I don't know. I feel like they might. Why? I feel like there's Because there's been know. such a shit show filming Wakanda forever. Like, will this I movie think... get finished? I don't know if this movie's gonna get finished. Yeah, I don't know. I mean I feel like it's it's it, I don't know. Like to continue what to Char what you know, Chadwick Boseman started when he started playing T'Challa, to continue that how it's meant to be rather than trying to scrape the barrel off whatever the fuck they're doing now and you got fucking Shuri not wanting to take the vaccine like I don't know I don't know whether it's time to just like go back to the drawing board and start again or whether but they've it's spent time, like, like over a hundred million dollars making this movie that they need yeah, to finish you know, sometimes you you, you, you you just take your losses don't you? you cut your losses and you move on like uh, no, that Game no. of Thrones show that they cancelled after they put like hundreds of millions of dollars in or something wait really? yeah remember the the other it was the the one about um, Robert's Rebellion they were doing and they cancelled really? it really? no they already put like yeah because all the actors were in it like it, it, like already done all the like their acting and stuff and they got paid and everything um, and what? then they cancelled the show so they just filmed a pilot obviously yeah 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 but it cost a lot of money yeah of course yeah and they cancelled they didn't buy yeah. it it was that bad oh yeah. god yeah it was so bad they were like fuck it we're not doing it I didn't know that. When was that? Uh, a little while ago. What's it, like, like during Game of Thrones time or after Game of Thrones? It was like around then. I can't remember if it was like during or just after. 
might have been just after. I think it was just after season eight. I think it might have been because I think it might have. It, it was probably fueled by season eight being so bad. They were like, if this show, like the show, obviously wasn't good enough that they were like, fuck, we can't put out another bad thing because yeah. it's gonna do. It's gonna be so bad for us. So they were like, no, fuck that. We're not doing it. Jesus fucking cross. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's. Well, that's a fucking disaster. I don't know what they're going to do with this Black Panther movie. I'm, I'm sad. For, I feel sad for the actors that give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, there's so yeah. many people on that sh- on that movie that, like, really care about Chadwick's legacy and know what's at stake. And they've made such a point in interviews, especially the director, of, like, how important it is to him to, to nail this. Yeah. And this fucking idiot. Idiot. is just ruining it for everyone. So dumb. They're going to have to figure this out soon, otherwise it's going to be fucked. Yeah. Um, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. We'll find out, I guess. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. And with that, James, that's uh that's it for the As Always podcast. Wow. For twenty twenty one. Weird fucking year. But we've made it to the end. We've done it. We survived and we've got time to recoup, re energize and be back next year with returning guests, with new guests, with some great laughs. We go again, James. We go again. Mm-hmm. so of course though thank you to the people over at patreon.com forward slash as always for making this show happen for, for supporting us throughout the many years but m- most especially this year James and I wish you a, a, an, an, all of you that listen an incredible new year and a merry Christmas hope you have a wonderful safe holiday period oh, make cool. informed decisions eat some beautiful food and drink with the families um, and just have a great time and we'll, we'll see you next year and if you would like a bit more and you're like, but I haven't had enough, guys. I just, uh, I'm not ready to say goodbye for the year. Well, head over to patreon.com forward slash as always and you will get more. You've got the Clubhouse podcast over there. There's still the last Clubhouse to come out next week. Still the last Four Pillars podcast to come out as well. And the last Four Pillars podcast. I don't know which is going to be out first. So if this is going to be out before that, who knows? It'll be this, right? Because Josh is editing both of them. He's going to surely start on this first. Yeah, yeah, true, true, to be fair. To be fair, but Four Pillars Podcast so late. But then again, yeah, he'll start on this first. He, he'll work on it today. Anyway, patreon.com forward slash as always, just a dollar a month. You get exclusive access to over 120 episodes. There's 129 episodes mm-hmm. of the Clubhouse Podcast exclusive yeah. to Patreon that you can stream, check out, get involved in all the memes, early access to James videos, polls for the As Always Podcast and War segment, all that great stuff. Thank you to the Sweet Vintage Lads at the $5 tier and above that are here on the credits. So we have Ollie the Superior Ollie, Avery Dobbs, Clark 53, Damien, Epic Alaric, or Gimli's Dwarven member, Ferentino, Flash Paradox, Franco, Jesper Olsen, King Richard III, Ryan Hafer, Tristan Weaver, Viridian, Bullsack 47, Aragon, Kimisaba Gamer, Cream Pies, Luma Strat, Sakaris, aka Kieran Adam, the Melissa, Bonnie Simp, Alfie Rodbert. My mouth is so fucking dry. I'm so dehydrated for some reason. And I'm just trying to read this list. I'm like, this is a struggle. My lips are dry and shit. This is not good be like that you know um uh alfie rodbert andy kill big dick 6699 ben davis ben higgins thankful for stick brethren benedict clobbers bfhc biggest fucking virgin bodge bq overlord the elder brian ford christian 0210 condor rose bully in the alley emil capo gurudito hacker ethan dean fishy furious coco gene give me a penis kinko swag god bless the visionary zach schneider gwen hughes hooky jack dg 1998 jane b bennett joe the fan of scarab josh duvillier josh j anderson joshua mora kissassin Christian Rowe, Liam, Luca, Lucas, R05, Louis de Leon, Murray5380, Master Bass, Max H, Mary, the Th- Mary Theftmas, Muddy Unicorn, Nick Miller, Otaka World 7, our best and favorite mod, Brownie, Philip Stillwagon, Polio, Puthi Got Me, Disabled, aka Zaccuccino, <laughs> Polio Puthi, <laughs> I think that's it's, this is, this is, um, yeah, Flute Thilly Thothage, I think that's what, I don't that's really know what's wrong um, I'll nail it next year. Radok, Ravjai, Seth, Son of Bitch, Odie Doggo, Sparky Bucks, Spectrum Division, Sussy Im- Imposter, Amogus Moment, The Blue Cow, TJFL, Tony, Tristan Obigfell, Walshy, and Zeppo. Thank you, Sweet Vintage Lads, for supporting us this year, powering this podcast, and we'll see you all next time. Thank you. We Goodbye. Will. Catch you later, everybody. See you soon. Goodbye.